Hey everyone, I am going to try to prove a theorem uh, by, or a theorem that I found in the book uh, Measure Theory by Halmos. So this is a theorem in my real analysis class that my professor said might be on a midterm. So I figured I may as well be prepared and try to give a proof, and I thought I'd share it with you all as well. So it's from Measure Theory, at least the proof that I am going to be following. It's the one in Measure Theory by Halmus, don't know his first name, page 68. <coughs> and it says that if E is a Lebesgue measurable set of positive measure, then there exists an open interval containing the origin and entirely contained in the different set uh, D of E. Um, I just wanted to find the different set real quick to make sure we know what that is. If E is a, a set with, uh, well, really any set of any subset of the reals, or, or probably of Rn. Um, D of E is the set X within R, or maybe I could say D in R. That's probably the best uh, the best way to go here, um, because I'll be using X for my definition, such that there exists X and Y in E, with E being a subset of Rn, with distance from x to y equals d. So if there are two points in this set E that have a difference d, then d is in the set d of E, and that's why it's called the difference set. Okay, so we want to prove that this difference set in any set of positive measure contains uh, an open interval around the origin. Now clearly it's going to contain the origin. It's going to contain the point, uh, the point zero, right? Because um, pick any set, any element of E, its distance from itself is zero, and so zero is obviously uh, in the different set of any set, in any non-empty set that is. But we want to prove a little more than that, we want to prove an interval around the origin. So I'm going to need to use this proof, let me erase uh, or this theorem, let me move this uh, this definition over here, and stick it, stick it up there maybe. Alright, and I will try to prove this uh, lemma kind of first and it will help me prove the, the main result that I want to show. So let's go ahead and get started here. If E is a Lebesgue measurable set of positive finite measure and alpha is some number between 0 and 1, then there exists an open interval u such that alpha times this measure is greater than or equal to, to the measure of u. So so let's let this set down here be my, my positive set of finite measure. Okay. And we're going to say, show that there is some interval uh, alpha that, or some interval that satisfies this property. So let, let, let's fix alpha. And what we can do, since the, the measure is defined as the, uh, the, the measure of E, I should say, is defined as the infimum of the measure of U such that u is an open set and e is contained in u. At least that's one, one possible way to define this thing. So clearly we, we can find some open set containing e whose measure is um, whose measure satisfies this property. Uh, because the, they can get smaller and smaller and, and have E, uh, e actually take up more and more of the open set. All right, so let, let me just uh, find some open set. And let's say, let's say the open set has this interval, has that interval. And, and maybe these are um, these blue things that look like intervals. Maybe they're not actually intervals because then the theorem I'm trying to prove would end up being quite trivial. But <clears throat> maybe you just can't see the, the discontinuities there, and they're not actually intervals. Okay, but then but then these are intervals that, that cover U, and this total set of all of this forms U. Okay, so E is the, the blue set, and uh, somehow I have two copies of E written down. And and U is the the purple set, and U is a, an open set. So it's there's a theorem in real analysis that says that uh, U, any open set U can be written as the countable union of disjoint open intervals. So, so these are disjoint open intervals. They, they cover 
e, and so we can think of it as the uh, the the measure of u equals the sum from i equals one to infinity of u sub i, where we think of u as the union from i equals one to infinity of u sub i, and all the u sub i are, are disjoint open intervals. So we've got u sub one here, u sub two, u sub three, blah blah blah. Now what we're given here, we, we can choose, we could have chosen our u, and we, we are assuming that we did choose our u, such that the measure of u is, uh, or, or sorry, such that the measure of e intersect u is greater than or equal to alpha times the measure of u. Okay, so so we've chosen it so that it gets sufficiently close to the actual set E that we're trying to measure, and it's sufficiently small around that. Well, that means let me switch colors real quick. Um, that means that the measure of um, the sum from, uh, or actually the the measure of U itself, since these are all disjoint. The measure of u is just the sum of all of these measures of the u sub i. So the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the measure of the u sub i, uh, measure of the u sub i intersect e. Is greater than or equal to alpha times the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the measure of u sub i. And we can go ahead and, since this is a uh, sum and alpha is a constant, we can go ahead and pull alpha inside this sum. And then we have the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of the measure of u sub i intersect e is greater than or equal to alpha times the same sum of alpha times the measure of u sub i. And so we know that at least for, for at least one i, this is going to be, it's going to be true that uh, the measure of u sub i so this right here implies that for at least one i, it will be true that the uh, measure of u sub i intersect e is greater than or equal to alpha times the measure of u sub i. And so that is the, the open interval that we wanted. Okay, so let me clear some of this. That's how we prove our, our lemma, sort of our initial theorem that's going to get us to this result. And we can go ahead and keep that, uh, that use of i that we're interested in. So let, let's say that this one here is the, the use of i. So this, uh, this one right here is the use of i that we, that we got. And we, can, we, we don't have to worry about the rest of this set that covers e. We can go ahead and get rid of that because we're just going to kind of zoom in on, on this one area. That's supposed to be my real line there, that little little black line. That's the reals, and, and we're talking about a subset of the reals, right? So let me go ahead and take this fact here that we have. And we can do this for any alpha. So let's say let, let's say that we had let alpha equal three quarters. Okay, we could we could have done that as if we would have this this set. So I'm going to go ahead and let alpha be three quarters. Okay, so we have three quarters uh the the measure of this this interval right here, u sub i, is greater than or equal to three quarters of the measure of u sub i. I just wanted to write that a little more clearly. All right. Now, what does that give us? Well, we've got this. Uh, we, we want to assume that we, we want to show that there's some sort of interval that is contained in the different set around the origin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show that the the interval I claim is contained in this in the different set is going to be negative one half times the measure of u 
positive one half times the measure of u, and I'm going to claim that that is contained in the different set. Okay, now how are we going to do that? Well, what I want to do is I want to first let x be an element of this, and I'm going to show that there are two points in e. Right, we're talking about the different set of e. I'm going to show that there are two points in e whose distance is x. And to do that, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tr take this uh, subset of e, basically e intersect u of i. So that's this portion right here. Okay, so that right there is e intersect u of i. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to translate it by x. Okay. Now, if I've translated it by x, we need need only show that the intersection is with e is non-empty because that shows that there are two points in e whose distance is x, right? If the intersection is non-empty. So I've translated this thing over by x, and if I if I intersect u sub i, I'm done. If I don't intersect it, what happens? Well, the measure of this set right here, this is u sub i intersect e, right? So this right here is u sub i intersect e. And once I've translated it, and, and maybe x is positive, maybe x is negative, so I can translate it to the right or left depending on whether x is positive or negative. But if I translate it to the left or, or to the right, and if it doesn't intersect uh, e at all, then what was its measure? Its measure was greater than 3 fourths of the measure of u sub i. But we also know that x is less than 1 half of the measure of u, so the total distance from uh, the beginning of this interval to the end of this interval is uh, the, the measure of u, and it's less than, we're translating it by less than one half of that. So what we should end up with is a, the, the distance from, from now the beginning of x uh, of, its tr of this translate to the end of u, or, or, um, or from the beginning of u to the end of this translate, if we're translating it to the right, basically the union the measure of this union should be less than one and a half times the measure of u, or the measure of u sub i. So, let me write that down. The measure of the union of, let me start with, start with e intersect, where are we? Oh, there we are. Lost track of my, where my stylus was for a second. The measure of E intersect U sub I union E intersect U sub I plus X. That's just will denote the fact that we've translated over translated it by X. The measure of this whole thing is less than or equal to three over two times the measure of U sub I. Because we have not translated it by more than uh, by, by more than half of, of the distance across u u sub i. But if they if the intersection is non empty, then we then actually it's going to be a strict this will be a strict inequality because uh, we have translated by something specifically less than half of that measure. So it's not that we've translated by something less than or equal, it's specifically less than that. Okay, and then, but if it's, if the intersection is empty, that means that these are disjoint, and the measure of this whole thing is going to be the sum of the measure of u sub i intersect e, which we know is greater than or equal to 3 quarters. So the sum of 3 quarters plus 3 quarters is 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 is less than or equal to something that is strictly less than 3 over 2, and that's a contradiction. So we know that there must be an intersection, and hence we know that x is in the uh, distance set of e. That's the proof, and I hope uh, you were able to follow that. I'm hopefully going to post some more videos about real analysis concepts. Until then, I'll see you later.